Creating a freestanding 3D sweep is not an out-of-the-box option in Revit project environment. But of course, there's a workaround for modeling it. And that will be the topic of this video. But first, let me welcome you to Super User Channel, where we talk about architecture-related software. Now back to sweeps. In order to create a solid sweep, we need a family that has two main options. First one is the ability to load a profile, which we can edit and customize to any shape. And the second one is the ability to pick a path by directly snapping on different model elements in the project. Both options are available in the railing system family. So I'll start by clicking on the railing by sketch command. I'll duplicate the family and call it 3D Sweep. Now let's preview the railing structure so we can adjust it. By default, Rivet is suggesting three components to define the railing, which are the vertical baluster, horizontal structural elements, and the top rail with the height of 900 mm. What we need to do right now is to delete all of these elements and keep only one continuous horizontal element, which is the top rail. I'll start by clicking on the baluster replacement, then change them all to none. Then I'll click on the rail structure and then delete them one by one. Now we are only left with the top rail, which I'll change its height to zero to make it flush with the slab top level. Now notice that the top rail type is circular. And if we clicked on it, we can see that it is using a profile family. And next to it is a drop menu showing all the profiles loaded in the project. For now, I'll cancel this dialog box, but I'll come back to it to load the profile we will model later. Now we are still inside the railing command as we still need to sketch the path. I'll click pick line and in the plan view, I'll start snapping around the model to draw the path. Now I can click on any element I want, like a wall or a floor, and the path will simply follow. Notice that I have the ability to pick lines that has the same level, but if you want the sweep to follow an inclined path, you need to use the pick new host option, which we will discuss at the end of the video, but for now, let's proceed with this method. I'll click finish and see the result in 3D view. The result is a pipe-like shape that goes around the building corner using the circular profile and following the path we draw. Now, since we are done with the path, we need to draw the profile. So I'll open a new profile the rail family. This family is self-explanatory. As it says, this horizontal reference plane is the rail top level. Think of it as level zero, and a sketch above it will be above the zero, and anything below it will be in negative. And the vertical reference plane is the rail center line. Now I'll start sketching my profile, which is a very simple C-section profile. Like any other family in Revit, you can make your profile parametric by adding dimensions and labels to your sketch. But for now, I'll leave it as one size profile. I'll save the family and call it C-section and then load it to the project file. Now I'll select the railing and I click edit type, then edit top rail type, duplicate the type, I'll call it a sweep for example, and then change the profile type to the C-section family we've just created. And that is basically the result I was looking for, a C-section profile which goes around a specific path that we can stretch into any direction. Though the command is named railing, we can really use it to create different shapes that is not typically related to rails. Now what makes this family even more powerful is its ability to pick a host. Notice that if we pick the rail, it will say that its base level is level 3. But if I pick the new host and pick the floor, notice that this option will be grayed out and it will have no level because it is hosted on the floor now. Accordingly, if I change the elevation of this floor, the rail will follow it, because that's its reference now. Let's make the hosting floor more complex and see how the family will act. I'll edit the floor level and change multiple points height so I can achieve some sort of a slope. 
Notice how the profile is following the floor and is bending itself to keep its alignment with the floor edge. Now this is open the potential to create more complex shapes that has inclined surfaces and curved shapes. And that's it for this tutorial. Please subscribe so you won't miss the next video. And thanks for watching.